Hi! Today I'll be discussing the strange phylum called Micronathozoan, which is made up of only one species found in Greenland. In 1979, in the cold waters of Greenland's Lake Isangua, a microscopic invertebrate was discovered, Limnogathia meerski. Initially placed in the Rotifera phylum, El Mayerski was reclassified as its own distinct phylum, Micronathozoa, following a comparison of two ice lakes on Disco Island. The discussion of their true phylum is ongoing, as they share many similarities with Rotifera and Nathostomulids, both in the clade Nathifera, as well as Platyhelminths and other assorted phyla. El Mayerski grow between 140 to 160 micrometers long and 50 micrometers wide. They consist of a head, thorax and abdomen, each of which is covered dorsally by epidermal plates, including a larger anal covering. The thorax has more flexible plating laterally, allowing a swaying motion during feeding. The main defining feature of this organism is its extremely complex pharyngeal apparatus, located in the head's posterior. Eleven pairs of multiciliated sensoria line the entire body, around 20 micrometers each, and one non-ciliary pair posterior to the head. Smaller cilia, arranged in a horseshoe pattern on the head, are used to direct food to the mouth opening. Posterior ventrally lies an adhesive pad that secretes a sticky glue that allows the organism to attach to a substrate. Moving down the taxonomical index, we follow Micronathozoa through Kingdom Animalia, Subkingdom Eumetazoa, and the clade Bilateria, due to their multicellularity, symmetry, and three germ layers. Micronathozoa are protostomal and are part of the group Spiralia. It's important to note, however, that their embryonic development has not been observed, and their placement in Spiralia is through their association with similar phyla in the Nathifera clade. The Nathifera is a clade of four phyla associated with their homologous jaw microstructures. This clade includes Micronathozoa, Rotifera, Nathostomulida, and Acanthocephala. Micronathozoa are most defined by their extremely complex jaw structures, more developed than any other invertebrate. The pharynx consists of three sets of jaws, the main jaws, dorsal jaws, and ventral jaws, that can be extended through the mouth and class food particles in a pincer-like motion. Their diet consists of bacteria, algae particles, and diatoms, all of which are directed to the mouth by the synchronized beating pattern of small cilia that line the head. Whilst the main jaw is homologous to both nathostomulids and rotifers, the further similarity of the ventral jaws to rotifers cements the idea that rotifera and micronathozoa share a more recent descendant. Here, we can take a better look at how the jaws of micronathozoa shape up with other organisms in the nathifera clade. The lateral expansion seen in cincada rotifers is quite similar to that in the micronathozoans. However, in the main jaws, the basal plate is quite similar as well to the nathostomulida jaws. It's easy to see here that the jaws in the Micronathozoa are far more complex than any other phylum in Nathifera. Following capture by the jaws, food particles travel down a minuscule esophagus and into a transparent midgut, which consists of paired cells starting at the anterior of the thorax to about the midsection of the abdomen. This gut structure is not entirely understood, but most likely follows the structure of the Rotifer's pseudocolum. Excretion through the anus is interestingly limited, with the epidermal anal plates opening periodically, the reason for which is still unknown. Two pairs of ciliated protonephridia are located at the anterior of the thorax and the abdomen. The hindgut is absent, with the midgut connecting directly to the anus and flame cells. The flame bulbs found in rotifers is quite similar to the flame cells of Micronathozoa, whereas Nathostomulids seem to lack any protonephridia. This is again further evidence of a closer evolutionary history between the rotifera phylum and Micronathozoans. Two rows of thoracic ciliophores beat in a flagellated fashion as the Micronathozoans' main source of locomotion, with further movement controlled by complex ventral ciliation that allows the organism to crawl. As shown in the bottom figure, Micronathozoans travel in a spiraled pattern when traveling through water. When moving along a substrate, they instead glide. 
Both of these movements are similar to the locomotion of nathostomulids. Another similarity is a limitation of backwards movement. An adhesive pad located posterior ventrally secretes a sticky substance that allows the organism to adhere to a substrate such as algae. These are the only epidermal glands in the entire body and show no similarity to any other nathifera. However, they are quite similar to that of the phylum Kinohincha or mud dragons, which are protostomial ectisozoans. The main brain of micronathozoans is just a cerebral ganglion complex located anterior to the pharyngeal apparatus. This brain shows slight indication of two lobes, with nerve cords connecting each lobe to the pharynx. Each of these nerve cords sits deep within the organism and is surprisingly developed, boasting around 16 nerve fibres in each. Other ganglion have been observed in the thorax and tail structures, but little research has been made on their complexity and functions. Eye spots have also been observed, and are strikingly similar to those in Rotifera, again another similarity between these two phyla. Respiration and reproduction are both extremely lacking in studied information, with the former being completely unknown. Despite being collected every summer for eight years between 1994 and 2002, every single organism found only contained developed female reproductive systems. Because of this, parthenogenesis was deemed to be the most likely method of reproduction, as it ties in with both Protifera and Nathostomulids. However, in more recent studies, juvenile micronathozoans seem to contain underdeveloped male gonads, indicating evidence of a protoandrous hermaphroditic life cycle. This life cycle means that juveniles possess male gonads and are able to mate with females, but as the organism matured itself, these male reproductive organs are replaced by those of female reproductive organs. Micronathozoans produce two types of eggs. Eggs produced in the summer are thin-shelled and hatch quickly. Thicker eggs are produced during the winter. These eggs are dormant and allows the organism within to survive the eight months of which Isangua Lake is frozen over and the adults cannot survive. Rotifera also show this dual egg production. However, the thick-shelled eggs are only formed following male fertilization. And thank you for watching my PowerPoint presentation on the Micronathozoan phylum. Uh, it's a very strange phylum, and it was very interesting to research them. The majority of my information came from the two studies done by Christensen and Funk, who were the people that initially classified the phylum themselves back in 2000. Bye!